Cove Rangers 52-goal hitman Mitch Meggins and said every fan in there could see it was an absolute disgrace after his side lost their league due playoff final against Cowdenbeth. After a goalless first leg last weekend, the Highland League champions' quest for Scottish League football ended in controversy, with the Blue Brazil scoring a winner which should not have stood before referee Stephen Kirkland reduced Cove to eight men, and dismissed both managers after a touchline skirmish. After going behind to an early penalty, Meganson's marvelous double made a 2-1 Cove by halftime. Cove's Mitch Meganson celebrating after scoring a goal to put his side 2-1 ahead. Pictures by Daryl Benz however, a free kick which looked soft but which the Aberdeen side failed to defend leveled it before Brad Smith made it 3-2 beats, scoring into an open goal after big number 9 Jordan Sheeran blatantly tripped keeper Stuart McKenzie. Meganson said, every fan in there could see it was an absolute disgrace how we lost that game. A foul for their third goal, not a foul for the second. We've been absolutely robbed. The boys have given everything all season and you get to this point, if we lost we're gracious and defeat and that's how it is but to lose like that is so hard to take. Similar to last weekend, Cove showed they were the more dynamic, attacking team, but a combination of slack defending and baffling officiating won the day. As they desperately sought a way back into the tie in the final section, referee Kirkland awarded free kick after free kick to the home side, preventing John Sharon's side from building anything. Meganson added, We showed we're a better team than them. First half we were battering them with chances again. Second half, you've got to defend the free kick for Cowden but second and the goals we lose at times are boys stuff. But you can't lose goals like that. For the third one there's not much we can do, it's a foul on the keeper. Even their striker, I asked him and he said, yeah. It's hard, it deflates you. We tried hard to get back in, but every decision goes against us. Everything goes for them. The ref gave them everything, it's frustrating. We had a couple of chances near the end, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. Sharon's men got off to a bad start. As had been the case in the first leg, Cove struggled to cope with Sharon's physicality up top on six minutes. His flicked header forward was latched onto by Robbie Buchanan and Alan Redford took him down from behind, conceding a penalty. Harvey Swan made no mistake in smashing it into the left top corner of Stuart McKenzie's goal. It looked a hammer blow, until Cove equalized three minutes later. As they loaded the blue Brazil box, skipper Eric Watson nodded the ball forward for Megan's and to fire a header into the far bottom corner. On home turf Beath looked a more capable footballing team. However, Megginson made it 2-1 on 33 minutes. He won the ball back for his under-pressure side on halfway. Paul McManus then received the ball and charged down the right to fire an inch-perfect center to Cove's talisman, who by this point had sprinted to the penalty spot to volley into the left bottom corner past the diving McGurn. On 27 minutes, Watson almost headed his team further ahead, but was denied by the sprawling beatkeeper. Five minutes after the break, a dubious free kick was awarded to Sheeran on the right of the Cove area after he tangled with Watson and Swan's low left-footed free kick somehow went through everyone, including Blair Malcolm's legs, to fool McKenzie. Sheeran hooked Masson for Johnny Smith to try to get Cove going in the beef half again, but sloppiness had crept into the game. Ugly football suited Beath and Buchanan saw a shot from 18 yards deflected wide by Darren Kelly on 66 minutes after a period of home side possession. However, they took the lead in scandalous fashion on 71 minutes. 
How the referee and linesman missed Stuart McKenzie being cleaned up by Sheeran after a clearance is a mystery, but it allowed Brad Smith to fire the loose ball in from 40 yards, despite the best efforts of the keeper to get back. In horrible, unsporting scenes afterwards, the Blue Brazil players stood taunting the Aberdeen team's fans. Cove were still fighting for them, though, and Meganson was unlucky to not find a route to goal after rounding McGurn. However, following Beath's goal, foul after foul was awarded by referee Kirkland, many appearing soft, allowing the desperate Cove no way back into the game as they bombarded the Blue Brazil, who were happy to sit back in numbers and defend their one-goal lead. McManus was given his marching orders for two quick yellows after complaining to Kirkland about his decisions as the game entered its final minutes. With 96 minutes played, Milne headed a cove corner over the bar, before the afternoon descended into pandemonium. Both teams' coaching staff and benches were on the pitch as players pushed and shouted at each other near the beef dugout after one of their players held on to the ball. There also looked to be arms and maybe even headbutts thrown. Cowden Bith's Brian Gilfil and punching Eric Watson, an incident after which the Cove skipper was sent off in the aftermath, centre-back pairing Scott Ross, for violent conduct, and Watson were sent off for Cove, reducing them to eight men. Gary Ballin and Sharon, the team's managers, were ordered off too, while Milne received a booking for his part in the fracas. It was a sour end to the season and Cove's League 2 hopes, which was protested by their fans. After the season's end promised so much, with the Aberdeen side's Balmoral Stadium set to open over the summer, Cove Rangers now face the dilemma of how to remind themselves of the brilliant season they've had and go again next term. Meganson said, I haven't really thought about next season yet. I need to take a wee break to let the legs recover from all those tackles I've had. We're going to be in the new stadium and we've got the Betfred Cup to start us off as well. It's going to be another season where we try to win the league and get another shot at it, promotion. In the aftermath of the game, Meganson said his remarkable goal-scoring tally had been rendered meaningless by the loss. On a personal note, yes, definitely, it's been my best season, he said. It means nothing now. It's just the way it's set up, it's always against the Highland and Lowland League teams. I think to be fair, if they finish bottom they should be relegated and it should be a playoff bin the Highland and Lowland League to go into League 2, teams, Cowden Bith, David McGurn, Fraser Mullen, Harvey Swan, Jamie Piper, Brian Gilfillan, Kyle Miller, David Cox, Blair Malcolm, Jordan Sheeran, Brad Smith, Robbie Buchanan. Subs Ben Riley, Cox 70, Scott Rumsby, Miller 90, Brandon Luke, Gilfillan 92. Subs not used, Blair Penman, Jordan Hornby, Brandon Luke, Mark Fotheringham, Cameron Muirhead. Cove Rangers, Stuart McKenzie, Alan Redford, Harry Milne, Scott Ross, Eric Watson, Darren Kelly, Ryan Scott, Connor Scully, Mitchell Meganson, Paul McManus, Jamie Masson. Subs, Johnny Smith, Masson 60, Dean Laurie, Redford 76. Subs not used, John McCafferty, Sam Robertson, Ryan Strawn, Daniel Park. Referee, Stephen Kirkland.